I'm very glad to join Berlin, the Berlinale again, and uh, the Forum and the uh, Teddy and uh, whatever is in Berlin, because you know it's a festival life. But always support me and help me in my work. So I'm very glad to be back and uh and to show this film that is something very i really tried to put new things in it things i never uh, did before so i hope people will appreciate it and uh and see you in berlin i am so i'm vincent Dieu, the director of this is the end that will be in the forum competition and uh cheers Los Angeles se déploie sans fin dans la nuit qui avance, ses brés d'hélicoptères scintillants. La course coûte une petite fortune, ma visa passe sans problème. Voici la fin, mon bel ami. Mon seul ami, j'y suis maintenant, en plein dedans, au beau milieu de la fin. La grande leçon de Los Angeles aux villes du Vieux Monde est celle d'une vulnérabilité assumée, d'une installation décomplexée dans le provisoire, d'un défi à toute durée. Au premier abord, l'expérience urbaine s'y réduit à presque rien, à une matière si pauvre et si lâche qu'elle en devient presque évanescente. Ainsi, Los Angeles retire à celui qui la découvre le temps nécessaire pour la vivre, ce bref moment où il pourrait dire « j'y suis Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Borbobak, and this time we are talking about the film This Is The End. Hi, mm. welcome. Welcome to the Teddy. Welcome to the Berlinale, or probably I should say welcome back to the Teddy. Yeah. Um, let's maybe start with um, how or, or how did this project come about? This uh. is the end. At the very beginning, it was more uh, as a, an essay about uh, a sentence of Jean Baudrillard that said that uh, in Europe, we, to we talk about this idea of the end, you know, of the collapse yeah. uh, uh, all the time, collapse of art, of love, of culture, of, uh, of reality, <laughs> whatever. And he would say that in America, it's already happened the end mm -hmm. so uh, it was kind of a metaphor but uh i took it in the poetical sense and i i wanted to go to los angeles and and check that idea uh and meanwhile i really happened to meet Dino Kutsoliutsos uh, on internet and and uh, he was in LA so inviting me to join him and then arrived COVID <laughs> yeah. and then arrived this my discover of uh, I mean rediscover of the American poetry and how lively and important it was in America uh, overall during that lockdown where it became kind of a resistance cultural resistance yeah. to to the void that was all over so All this together made the film, and obviously the help of uh, Arte and my producers that encouraged me to mm -hmm. to go on. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that you say that there was this very intense mix of outside forces as well that shaped the film to a great extent, mm. like COVID as well. Can you tell us a bit about the production process? 
Yes, uh, as, uh, this first idea I had, um, it was called in French la fin de tout, that is more or less the same meaning that this is the end. And um, I wrote a little uh, project, like a big poems, you know, with already this idea yeah. of the swimming pools and, and the the end, uh, the, the end of cinema, how Hollywood is always using the same things now, making, you know, number one, number two, number three. Uh, of this, and I send it to Arte La Lucarne. I think she will be in Berlin, uh, Rasha Salti, who's uh, doing the programs for this uh, this uh, kind of films. La Lucarne, you know, they made film with uh, Sokurov, with Chantal Ackerman, with mm. it's very, very good uh, with Timing Young. This famous days film was uh, La Lucarne thing. So I sent it like this, and obviously she liked the project. We had a meeting in December, yeah, and then there was a lockdown, and I received a phone call during the lockdown. I was in Normandy, mm -hmm. and they said, but we like the project, and uh, let's do it. So it was a, a good new and overall is a, let's do it. But when and how this yeah. is well, more complicated. But the, the first uh, motor of the thing was really Arte and my producer that yeah. really pushed me to, to believe in it and to do it and say, you're saying this is the end. So now it is really the end. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very fitting indeed. Um, in a way memory is is a central element to the film um but also there is a very um complex um working with different temporal dimensions in the film somehow mm -hmm. like these classical categories of past and present and future collapse in the film can you tell us a bit about this aspect yes the 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 the, the idea of the, the the plot of the film is that I found I find in on Facebook uh, a face that reminds me someone I knew yeah. forty years ago, much before the gay internet and all that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, the, the, in Facebook there is this category you may know, and there is yes. few names. Yeah. So yeah. and I saw the picture of uh, Dino Kutsoliutsos so, and. The, he will, I, I never met him in the reality, mm -hmm. but he was exactly the portrait of a Greek man I met 40 years ago, uh -huh. and he was Greek too, who died of AIDS in the, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it was the, this time of re-seeing someone after 40 years, you yeah. know, the, everything has changed, overall in the gay life. And, uh, and to decide to join him, to kind of... of redo the thing we do 40 years so there were already these two times yeah. and then arrived the 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 present i mean the the covid and all what happened during that moment we had a very it was very difficult to get visas to go there but we yeah, had the imagine. first ones from paris to los angeles and also this poetry that was another time because some of the poems are quite old you know they're for the Absolutely. 20s and some of them are really written a few months ago. So it was interesting also to see how this poetry voice was kind of out of time, out of joint, uh, yeah. as would say uh, Hamlet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's talk about like some of these poetry segments and like the poems that um, mm. that are being uh, recited and performed um, in the film. There are quite many um, queer artists and queer mm. voices mm. coming through um, mm. on that level as well. Obviously, there is your own voice in it. Mm. So there was this very um, fascinating, almost dialogue between mm. different queer voices in the film. Uh, can you mm. explain this a bit? At first, I have to say I took the poem from internet, you know, without really knowing who was writing what yeah. you know it's very open and i changed them i rewrote them most of them and the one who were already queer they stayed queer 
and the one who wasn't, I, I made them queer. I yeah. queerized them. I queerized them. Overall, Cummings, that is more or less, you know, a masculine hero of poetry. You yeah. know, some women doesn't like it. In the, but I change it completely uh, in the, the the sexuality of the poet yeah. and also in the age of the poets, because many of these poems are written by people that were 18. And I, <laughs> I say them uh, uh, for uh, people of uh, 50, 60. So it's, uh, it was, uh, there was a, a complete reappropriation of these poems by me. And I wrote them in French and a friend of mine, Stéphane Bouquet, helped me to put them back in English. Mm -hmm. And also my voice was written uh, much after the, the poem sings. So when I, I started to write these stories that are more or less true, they are all, always informed by the poems. Mm -hmm. I knew what was... So sometimes I, I say in French part of the poem to, to make links between these two levels. Yeah. And, uh, and I think it worked uh, because I chose this poem because they were um, touching me a lot, uh, yeah. moving me a lot. So it's also part of the of this appropriation. You, you, you hear some of them also, overall, the poem of Jim Morrison, This is the End. I, I say it in French mm -hmm. uh, at the same time. Sometimes even almost just near the, the original poem, you have this translation I make is as if I was talking to myself. So it's um, yeah, it's a, a game of writing and the meaning of the poems, how to to make them very personal and also completely universal. Yeah. So as you said as well, at the core and kind of the driving force behind the project as well was this idea of the end. Um, mm. And I was wondering, because uh, at some point um, you say in the film that I built myself on the idea of the end and that things really come mm. to an end, like truly mm. come to an end in Los Angeles. Mm. Um, mm. Can you unpack a bit for us this idea of the end that you, mm -hmm. that you so intensely worked with in this, in this project? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's a... Uh philosophical end or a political end, more or right. less, I'm talking about, because if we really are honest with ourselves, in all our life, we have a break at a certain moment, and everything becomes kind of uh, uh, artificial all around. I know there is a war in Ukraine, but that's just know it because of TV. I, I, the, the experience of life is completely changed now so i think it was an end but the end of a certain way of perceiving the world mm -hmm. and desire and everything goes together so i know it's it's not true everyone would say no no reality is still there but sticking to this idea was a very strong poetic uh, uh, way to 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 deal with a, a feeling we all have, more or less, that things are, are falling apart, that the, the, yeah. the world is complete. And uh, and I, I wanted to say it's not pessimistic saying everything is finished and that's it. It's also the way that we need collectively to invent another way of perceiving the world, you know, uh, uh, yeah. to think about it. And maybe the poetry is one of these ways because it's the only... Uh, world where uh, the market didn't eat everything we we see also in uh, in cinema in yeah. literature in modern art overall the market has become very important and how to stay subversive how to mm -hmm. to invent and i think it's very important for the queer world yeah. we, we have to to, to stay uh, effective in our critic uh, of, of the world and and this was very strong for me when i went to america to see that uh, poetry is very free and very lively uh -huh. uh, much more than we think here even if it has a lot to do with rap with slam with all this kind of of, uh, of voguing all, all this possibility of using language in another way and i think this uh this poetry club is also kind of a little nest of uh, resistance against yeah. this end of this meaningless 
of uh, meaninglessness of, of the world. Yeah, in that sense, it's also like a critique of of this capitalist world order that kind of, mm. as you very nicely put it, like it eats up more and more from culture and cultural expressions. And you are saying that yeah. you are offering in this film as like poetry could be one way where subversion still becomes possible. Do you see any other forms or or ways of artistic and cultural expression and work that could be subversive and could resist to this pool of this capitalist machinery? I, I, I don't have uh, any uh, real solution, but mm. what I really think is that each of us, artist or not, has to make kind of a of a, um, introspection to 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 accept that in a certain way we all have to deal with this world that we think is already finished, but yeah. we we continue to to feed him with uh, some time. And I think uh, if there is a collective consciousness of this need to invent another it's not only poetry it's all the relationship between one another between the intimacy and the collective between our private lives and our public lives you know so so art deals with that and all my cinema is is about that is how that we must not only make one film more because we are paid for that and it's our life we, each film we make must deal with this meaninglessness that the general meaninglessness of art in general and if we don't think about it collectively mm -hmm. it won't work because each one think is going to take his little possibility of surviving and uh, i think it's uh, it's already lost this and we see it with the ecological issues yeah. but anyhow we have to deal with enormous change in our lives so why not take it in a, a more uh, at the same time, lucid and creative way. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Um, formally speaking um, about the film, um, repetition becomes a very important tool that you use. Like very often we see things on a loop. There is this, uh, this, uh, this idea of looping. Um, you use the format of GIF or GIF, however mm. anybody would mm. like to uh, say it. Um, can you tell us about uh, about your idea about the formal elements in the film, particularly about looping and and this repetition? The, the, it's it's the main uh, aesthetic idea of the film is that what we call the end is not a collapse, a rupture. It's only that things come in a infinite loops that yeah. repeat and you can i really felt it for example in the way of life of the gay district in los angeles uh, west hollywood where everything is settled to to be repeated all the time even the desire you know with these haps you have yeah. and you can say what you want and and it's there, there is no possibility of a rupture you know of a complete change yeah. because we are completely trapped in those loops and also, in a certain way, these loops uh, regarding sexuality, for example, are also, uh, yeah, another way to touch each other. To and and the fact that these two men are uh, sixty and seventy uh, means also that this loop is also a way of getting old. You know, a way of of entering kind of a. Um, wiseness a uh, kind of a uh, uh, peace also so I, I didn't want it to make like if life was only repetition it's yeah. like a, a loop we have to enter and make uh, uh, grow in a certain way and to to work on it and and make it more less violent less uh, uh, so so th th this was the idea i i don't have an, uh, a real yeah talk about that i cannot formulate it with words but i i had the feeling that in my life and overall when i arrived there in la everything was kind of a 
endless repetition of the same with this feeling of death you 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 feel very strongly and even with young people so it seems that we are kind of trapped in our identities like that do, doing what we are supposed to do even subversion is kind of in the in the same uh, loop and uh, because maybe we don't yes think about it collectively and in the political uh, power of this loop that yeah. can be something very strong also if we use it in another way and I think modern art does it in a certain way. The, the contemporary art deals a lot with loop, with videos, with GIF, with uh, yeah. Andy Warhol was already already working on that. And it's uh, the, our relation to time, also, yeah. and to time is to to death. I mean, to to I don't know how you say in English transcendence, transcendence, transcendence. Yeah, you know, the idea that something is bigger than us. I'm not a Christian or whatever, and I can see in America it's uh, also a market. <laughs> you yeah, have the whole kind of creatures, sex, uh, and all that, and uh, so we have to deal with uh, with poetry, with beauty. That, as for me, as a almost as a cult, mm. but to to invent the beauty of the world that is coming, that yeah. is a, a little bit what I try to do, and I do it with my own uh, tools, mm -hmm. that are queer tools. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I noticed at the beginning of the film that you dedicated this film to your mother. Um, um, how did that come and why did you think that this film is is something that you would like to dedicate to your mother specifically? Uh, it's very sad, but my mother died during the editing of the of I'm the sorry. film and uh, i mean she was quite old she was 91 mm. and uh she always phoned to me saying so where well, are you finishing the film i want yeah. to see the new film um, because she knew it would be the last film she would see and uh, and she couldn't even wait uh, until then i think that older people uh, like my mother were very shocked by covid by what mm. happened during two years for them and uh, she didn't want to go on. She she took pills. She, she didn't die just, you know, like that. Mm. She, so she decided to stop. And I think it was very strong. And I I was sad, obviously, but I decided to dedicate all this work because it was very difficult to edit the film. It was something uh, uh, harsh, you know, with that three months editing and talking and fighting sometimes. And, and redoing things and uh, I said yeah I go on I, I, I won't stop for three weeks and cry and do all that I said she she wouldn't let so I said I dedicate this to my mom yeah that's very beautiful yeah mm. well Vincent thank you very much uh, thank for you. talking to us um, about the film it was very eye-opening um, and I think a lot of things were unpacked um mm. so yeah thank you very much i wish you all the best for the berlinale i hope mm. we will see each other at some point and uh, definitely definitely and yeah it's it's an honor to have you with the teddy once again thank you yeah. thank you